Hello everyone. I am here with the part 2 of a GPSTR 2022 Mathematics and Science question paper. I am going to solve the descriptive part in this video. Before starting the class, let me tell you, please watch this video fully. Means don't forward it and watch. Please have patience and watch the video fully because unless and until you watch it thoroughly, you won't understand the numericals. There are many numericals in this descriptive part. Okay. Then the second point is that after you watch this video and I believe that you have watched part 1 also. So after watching part 1 and part 2, please you evaluate your question paper by yourself and let me know the expected marks, what marks you are expecting. Okay. I will be very happy to know your expected marks. Okay. And the third point is that please let me know my mistakes. If I make any mistake in any of my video, not only this video. Particularly this video because here I am solving the question paper, right? I don't want any one of you to get the wrong information. By chance, if I made any mistake, please feel free to write in the comment section and I will ping it in the comment section, okay? So, so that wrong information is not reached through me. And last but not the least, please like my video if you are liking my work. Then share the videos to GPSTR, HSTR, TET and CTET. KTET, all these aspirants. If you have friend circle, then please share in that groups. Okay. And please subscribe to this channel, Unfog with Dr. Atahar Parveen, and click the bell icon for further notifications whenever I upload the new video. Firstly, I want to tell you that I have made two mistakes in my previous video, that is part one of this question paper, that I want to correct it here. Anyway, I have pinned the comment also in the comment section. I have pinned the right answers also. Still, I would like to discuss here also so that there will be clarity in the answers. In this question number 40, somehow I stopped it till x is equal to 25 degree. But in the question, they have asked angle AQP, right? So, I need to substitute the value of x and calculate angle AQP, which is equal to 5x minus 10 degree. Here, x is 25 degree. I substitute and I get the answer as 115 degree. So, here the option is 4. Option 4, 115 degree is the right answer. And the one more question was question number 46. In my previous video, somehow I assumed that x1 and uh, y1 both will be 0. But that's not right. Because here they are asking the distance of a point from x axis only. That's why x1 will be 6, x2 also will be 6. And y1 is 8 and y2 will be 0 because they are talking about x-axis. Now apply the distance formula. Put the values of x1 and x2, y1 and y2. Then you get the square root of 64 which is 8 units. So the right answer will be option 2. Now let's start with our 2 mark questions. In our last video in part 1 we have discussed question number 51 and 52. In this video let's start from question number 53. So from here onwards all the questions will be descriptive questions. I am solving maths, physics, chemistry and biology, all of the questions from your GPSTR 2022 question paper of mathematics and science. Okay, so the question is solve 8x plus 3y minus 13 is equal to 0 and 6y plus 5y minus 18 is equal to 0 by cross multiplication method. See for cross multiplication method, there is one procedure. It is that you write the coefficients of x and y one below the each okay 8 and 6 you write it in this manner then i have put arrows to make you understand first you write x upon 3 into minus 18 you leave 8 and 6 right now you start from 3 okay it will be 3 into minus 18 minus of 5 into minus 13 in the denominator okay every time in the denominator there will be minus in between the two terms but if that term is already having a minus sign then you have to include that also okay so, below x you write this and then below y also you write the next two terms. Then again this will be equal to 1 upon the first term. You start from first there. Again, it will be 8 into 5 minus 6 into 3. So, this is the procedure of how we do cross multiplication. Now, you solve for x and y. Once you solve for x and y, you will get values. x is equal to the whatever the value you are getting the constant. Here it is 1 by 22. So, it will be equal to 11 by 22 because you have 11 in the denominator of x. That's why x will become 11 by 22 or it will be equal to 1 by 2. In same manner, y will be equal to 66 upon 22. So, y will be equal to 3. So, these are the values of x and y. 
if you have any doubt in case then there is one procedure simple procedure for verification also just you substitute the values of x and y in the easiest equation given the question okay so any one equation which you feel is easy you can pick up and you just substitute values of x and y which you are getting after solving this question okay so here x is 1 by 2 and y is 3 if i substitute i am getting 13 is equal to 13 that is left hand side will be equal to right hand side so this answer is the right answer okay next question question number 54 in triangle pqr angle q is 90 degree pr plus qr is equal to 25 centimeter and pq is equal to 5 centimeter find the value of sin r see here in this given triangle it is given that pq is 5 centimeter and pr plus qr is 25 centimeter that's why qr will become 25 minus pr hmm? and then the hypotenuse is x we don't know we need to know the hypotenuse value because they are telling us to find sin r right so sin r will be equal to opposite side of the triangle upon hypotenuse here opposite side is pq but uh, hypotenuse is x we don't know the value of that x right so first we find that x then we can easily find sin r so this is how we do we use this uh, pythagoras theorem here in this triangle pr square will be equal to pq square plus qr square substitute the values you know that pr is x rest things also you know pq is 5 centimeter it is given so write it as 5 square and qr is 25 minus pr or 25 minus x put it as whole square then you solve once you solve here x square will get cancelled and then x will be equal to 13 this x is pr right now we know the hypotenuse value that is 13 therefore sin theta or sin r will be equal to opposite side pq upon hypotenuse pr this will be equal to 5 upon 13 so this is the answer next question number 55 is the length of the minute hand of a clock is 14 centimeter find the area swept by the minute hand in 15 minutes okay and they have given you pi value which is 22 by 7 so this should click in your mind that there is some formula which is involving the pi in case you don't know which uh, formula to use so this can be a hint for you okay so first of all minute hand it will complete full circle in 60 minutes correct and the angle for this full circle will be 360 degree then you can find the angle swept by the minute hand in 15 minutes that will be equal to 360 degree by 60 into 15 this will give you 90 this is your theta now now they have given you the length of minute hand that is 14 centimeter now you should know that area swept by minute hand in 15 minutes will be equal to area of that sector in that watch now area of sector is equal to theta upon 360 degree into pi r square now substitute the values so now you got theta that is the angle swept by minute hand in 15 minutes that is 90 degree right that 90 degree upon 360 degree into pi value 22 by 7 into the length of that minute hand that is 14 centimeter it will be whole square now solve for this you get some area that area will be the area swept by the minute hand in 15 minutes here it comes out to be 154 centimeter square next question pa pb and tq are tangents drawn to a circle as shown in the figure if pa is 10 centimeter find the perimeter of triangle ptq here it is given that pa is equal to 10 centimeter but lengths of tangents drawn from an external point they are all, always equal right so pa will be equal to pb that will be equal to 10 centimeter now they want us to find the perimeter of triangle ptq now what will be the perimeter of this triangle it will be equal to pt plus tr actually i can write tq the perimeter of the triangle will be pt plus tq plus pq but i am writing pt plus tr plus tq plus pq the reason is that this tr will be equal to ta for the same reason why because length of tangents drawn from an external point are equal and for the same reason qr will be equal to qb that's why i'm including these okay pt plus tr plus rq plus pq now in place of tr i can write ta right and in place of rq i can write qb now i have the value of pt plus ta that is pa that is 10 centimeter right in the same manner i have the value of pq plus qb that is pb that is 10 centimeter so i get the value of perimeter of this triangle as 10 plus 10 is equal to 20 centimeter 
Next question. Construct a triangle ABC with AB is equal to 6 cm, angle ABC is equal to 60 degree and angle ACB is equal to 75 degree. Here what you do, first you draw one line that will be of 6 cm. Then you make angle ABC is equal to 60 degree, then angle ACB is equal to 75 degree. Then join those two lines, okay, extend them till they join. Then you get this triangle ABC. Now thing is how to construct this angle ABC and angle ACB. This is very simple actually. First I will tell how to construct for 60 degree. For 60 degree what you do, you take that compass with the pencil. Then you take the size more than half of this 6 centimeter. For example, say 5 centimeter. Okay. Then you make A as center and then you mark the arc from A. Okay. Then again you mark one more arc which will cut the first arc. You mark it from B. Then when these two arcs meet, at that point you extend A. Okay. Then you keep that line like that only. Here at B you construct 75 degree. How you construct 75 degree? First at B you construct one perpendicular bisector. 90 degree perpendicular bisector you construct. For that what you do? You draw one big arc. Then you cut those arc. That with the same distance you cut that big arc. Again keeping those two arcs at center you again draw two arcs. One from each arc. Okay. And then those two arc will join somewhere. Put that line. That will be your perpendicular bisector which you draw from B. Now, again you can draw one 60 degree angle also. Okay. Now, the, there is angle between 60 degree and 90 degree, right? That 30 degree is there, no? If you draw, if you bisect one angular bisector, if you make there between 60 degree and 90 degree, that 30 degree will get divided into 15 degree. Now, this 60 degree plus 15 degree will become 75 degree. Okay. Actually, I cannot literally construct this triangle and show you because th those animations and all, they will take lot of time. Okay. But you all are eagerly waiting for the answers, right? That's why I, I constructed it on a paper and I am putting a picture here. If you all still don't understand, let me know. Okay. Now, those two lines you join. You join that uh, line with 75 degree and the line with 60 degree. Extend till they join. Mark it as C. That will be your ACB triangle. Okay. So, this is how you can construct a triangle using this 60 degree and 75 degree. Next, draw a circle of radius 3.5 centimeter and construct two tangents such that angle between them is 60 degree. First, you draw one circle with radius 3.5 centimeter. Okay. Now, remember one thing that they are telling you those tangents should have angle 60 degree between them. Remember? The angle subtended by an arc at the center, it will be double the angle subtended by it at any point on the remaining part of the circle. So, keeping this theorem in mind, you should note that at the center, your two radii should be such that their angle should be 120 degree. Because it is 2 times 60 degree, right? Then only you are going to get 60 degree with the tangents. Okay? Keep this rough idea in your mind. Now, you draw perpendicular bisector at B and perpendicular bisector at A. Okay? Extend it till they meet. These are your tangents. Okay? Now, those were your two mark questions. From here onwards, from question number 59, these are three mark questions. The first question is, find the value of x square plus 1 by x square when x is equal to 5 plus 2 root 6. I have solved it for you. x square plus 1 by x square, there is one identity which will be equal to x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2. Okay, you can use this identity and calculate the values of the uh, given this thing x square plus 1 by x square. Now x is equal to 5 plus 2 root 6 is given. That's why 1 upon x will become 1 upon 5 plus 2 root 6, right? Now you rationalize. There is one uh, procedure to solve this type of uh, numbers, right? So it is called rationalization. So you use 5 minus 2 root 6 to rationalize it. So that you multiply and divide 5 minus 2 root 6 with 1 upon 5 plus 2 root 6. So, in the numerator, you will have 5 minus 2 root 6 and in the denominator, it will be like a plus b into a minus b, which is a square minus b square. So, a square is 25, b square will become 4 into 6, that is 24. So, your 1 upon x will become 5 minus 2 root 6 because in the denominator, there will be 1. Now, keep this aside. Now, take that equation for which you have to find the value x square plus 1 by x square. This is equal to x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2, right? Now, substitute the values. You get the answer 98, okay? 
Next question. Calculate the mean for the following frequency distribution. It is a question from statistics. For this, you have to make a table. They have given you class interval. They have given you frequency. First, you find xi. What will be xi? You take the average for this, right? 5 plus 15 by 2. That is 20 by 2 will be 10. 15 plus 25 by 2. It will be 20. 25 plus 35 by 2. It will be 30. 35 plus 45 by 2. It will be 40 and so on. You do that. Then you use whatever the frequency is given, then you that you write here. After that, you do fi into xi. That means you multiply xi into fi. Then you get one answer. After that, your mean will be equal to summation fi xi upon fi. This summation fi xi means you have to add 30 plus 100 plus 210 plus 120 plus 100. Then summation fi means you add those frequencies. That will be 20. 560 by 20 will be 28. This is your answer. Okay. Next question. Find the area of a triangle whose measure of two sides are 8 cm and 11 cm and the perimeter is 32 cm. Here you should know that there is one formula involving the perimeter and sides of the triangle. Here they have given that two sides of the triangle have some value 8 cm and 11 cm and perimeter which you call 2s it is 32 cm. Using this you can find the other third side right because a plus b plus c will be equal to perimeter. That's why your other side will be, third side will become 32 minus 8 minus 11. That will be 13. Now you have the third side also. Now this formula involves the perimeter and three sides. This area of the triangle will be equal to square root of S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C. Put the values and find the answer. It will be 8 square root of 30 centimeter square. Next question. Find the other two zeros of a polynomial x cube minus 7x plus 6 when one of its zero is minus 3. So, this is a question from algebra. First, they have told that x is equal to minus 3. Right? Because 0 here, they mean to say that it is root. When one of its zero is minus 3 means when one of its root is minus 3. So, x is minus 3 or x plus 3 is 0. Now, you divide the given polynomial. Use x plus 3 and you divide x cube minus 7x plus 6. Then you get one quotient. It will be x square minus 3x plus 2. This quotient, it looks like a quadratic equation, right? But then we don't know the value of this quotient. For that, you use this uh, algorithm with which we use in division. Dividend will be equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Here, remainder is 0. Then dividend, we have the question that is dividend. Then divisor is x plus 3. But then because remainder is 0 and x plus 3 is also 0, which is given, that's why x square minus 3x plus 2, our quotient will become 0. Okay. We need this. After we have this equation, we can use the quadratic equation formula. Minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. And then find the value of x. Actually, without using this also we can do. But this equation, it is not solvable like that. Few equations are not solvable by simple factorization, right? At that time, we use this quadratic equation formula. So, here we are using it. Here a will be 1, b will be minus 3, c will be 2. Substitute the values. You will get two values for x. It will be 2 and 1. So, already they told that there is one value for x which is minus 3. The other two values are 2 and 1 after solving this quadratic equation. Okay. Okay. Next question. The length of diagonal of a rectangular field is 60 meter more than its shortest side and the length of longer side is 30 meter more than the shortest side. Find the area of the field. So, you can have one illusion in your mind that rectangular field looks like this and then because the longer side is 30 meter more, that's why that length will be x plus 30. Because the shorter side we don't know, we are putting x as its value. Then diagonal is x plus 60 meters, correct? Now, you apply the Pythagoras theorem. If you apply the Pythagoras theorem, you will get uh, x plus 60 whole square is equal to x square plus x plus 30 whole square. You simplify this. You get the value x is equal to 90 and x is equal to minus 30. Now, we will have to neglect the uh, negative value number because length will not be minus, right? So, we will take the positive value number. That is x will be 90 meters. That's That means that the side is 90 meters. So, longer side will become 90 plus 30. It will be 120 meters. But the question is they want us to find the field area, right? So, area is equal to length into breadth. 120 into 90, 10800 square meter. It will be your area of that rectangular field. Next question. Find the coordinates of the point on x axis which is equidistant from 2 comma minus 5 and minus 2 comma 9. Here you can use the distance formula. 
these points you have to carefully substitute here substitute them in the distance formula you get x is equal to minus 7 and they are asking that the coordinates are on the x axis right that's why your y will be 0. Next question. Two poles of equal heights are standing opposite each other on either side of the road which is 80 meter wide. From a point between them on the road, the angles of the elevation of the top of the poles are 60 degree and 30 degree respectively. Find the height of the poles. Actually, this type of numericals we have solved in our trigonometry video, right? Okay. Anyway. So, to solve this, first you find a tan. Because this is a question from heights and distances, right? What I told, heights and distances means find the tan of the tangle. So, here tan 60 and tan 30 will be there. Now, one more thing is that the heights P, Q and R, S, they both are equal. They are the poles, right? They have given that they are equal. Now, with this, because tan 60 is QP by QT, I can find QT, right? It will be QP into tan 60. Tan 60 is root 3. In same way, I can find for ST. Here tan 30 will be root 3. Then after having these, I will add them. I will add QT and TS or ST. This is equal to 80 centimeters they have given in the question. With this, I can find the value of QP. But then what is QP? QP is the head of the pole, isn't it? They want us to find the head of the pole. That's it. It will be 20 root 3 meters. Either you can stop here or you write root 3 as 1.73 and multiply it with 20. You get 34.64 meter. Okay, next question. Two poles of heights 6 meter and 11 meter are stand vertically on a plain ground. If the distance between their feet is 12 meter, find the distance between their tops. So, this will be your figure. Then you draw one line parallel to this BD that is EC and make one right angle to triangle like this AEC. Okay, now you apply Pythagoras theorem. Here AC square will be equal to EC square plus AE square. Now, we know that AE is equal to 11 minus 6 that will be your 5 meters. And now you put this value of EC. EC is equal to 12 meters, right? Because we made it like a square. So, opposite side of BD is EC. So, it will be 12. So, 12 whole square plus 5 square will be equal to 144 plus 25. It will be 169. So, value of AC will be square root of 169. That is 13 meters. We need to find the distance between their tops, right? So, the distance between their tops will be this hypotenuse of this right angle to triangle AC. That will be equal to 13 meters. Okay, next question. A well having diameter 3 meter and 14 meter deep is dug. The earth taken out of it has been spread evenly all around it in the shape of a circular ring of width 4 meter to form an embankment. Find the height of the embankment. Now, depth of the well is 14 meters. So, we write it as H1 which will be 14 meters. Then, the diameter is 3 meters. So, we take radius will be equal to 3 by 2 meters. Then, width of the embankment is given that is 4 meter. Now, you can see from the figure that... Uh, that embankment no it will be in cylindrical shape it will have outer radius r2 which will be equal to this width of the embankment plus the radius of the circular end of the well that is 4 plus 3 by 2 this will be equal to 11 by 2 meters now height of the embankment let it be h2 okay now keeping this in mind you find the volume of soil dug from well this will be equal to volume of the earth used to form the embankment this will be equal to pi rh actually pi rh means it will be equal to pi rh only but here for embankment, we have to subtract the radius R2 minus R1. Then substitute the values. You get H2 will be equal to 1.125 meter. So, using the volume of the cylinder, you can find the height of the embankment here. Next question number 68. Construct a quadrilateral ABCD with AB is equal to 5 centimeter, BC is equal to 6 centimeter, CD is equal to 4.5 centimeter, AD is equal to 6 centimeter, and AC is equal to 6.5 centimeter. This is the construction. It is very simple. You construct first you draw that line. BC will be equal to 6 cm. Then construct angle B is equal to 75 degree. We know how to construct 75 degree, right? Then after that, you cut to with the distance 5 cm. Let it be BA. Then again, you uh, construct one angle C that will be 120 degree. How do you do it? You do it double like 60 degree. Hmm? Then you cut one arc on that CD for 4.5 cm. Then you join AD. Thus, your uh, quadrilateral ABCD is ready. Okay, next question. Convert the following frequency distribution into less than type and draw its augue. Uh, this table is given for class interval and frequency. Here, you find the cumulative frequency. How you find it? Uh, first number you write as it is 8. 
next number you add with 12 8 plus 12 will be 20 now for the next number you add 20 with 18 that will be 38 now next add 38 with 16 it will be 54 you go on so that will be your cumulative frequency now just plot these values in the graph paper you will get an OGIF. okay next question solve x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 and 2x plus y minus 7 is equal to 0 graphically for this i have one simple trick what i used to do is first you solve these equations algebraically you solve it somewhere in the margin and keep it just that you know the values of x and y okay now when you plot the graph also you should get these values first you make that table if that equation is very bigger try to use very small numbers or negative numbers so that you won't get the values bigger in y or else your graph will become very big and you will have to manage with the units scale and all that headache will be there so try to make as simple as possible put x values as small as possible so that you get small values of y hmm? then you plot it in the graph i have plotted here you can see the blue circles i have plotted the first one is uh, which is in the first quadrant it is x plus y is equal to 5 and then here which is in the third quadrant it is 2x plus y is equal to minus 7 join them join till they meet okay so that point will be your value of x and y here see you can see that when you calculated also you got minus 12 comma 17 this also if you extend you know i have a small graph sheet here if you have a big graph sheet you can do it and see it will be minus 12 plus 17 okay this is how you do next question calculate the kinetic energy acquired by a body whose mass is 15 kg and moving with a uniform velocity of 4 meter per second who all have attended my classes it will be very like easy it will be like buy a ka khel for them it is kinetic energy right it is half mv square just substitute the values directly here 15 kg and 4 meter per second 15 kg is the mass 4 meter per second is the velocity of the object we know that kinetic energy is half mv square substitute the values and you get 120 joules next question write the three equations of motion with respect to the linear motion this is very simple right whoever have attended my classes you should have been very happy while writing the exam i am feeling really very happy because this these are the direct questions from our class right anyway so the three equations of motions are v is equal to u plus at v square is equal to u square plus 2as s is equal to ut plus half at square where u is initial speed v is final speed t is the time taken is the acceleration and s is the displacement of the body okay this is for the linear motion next question write the symbol of the device equipment used to represent the following in an electric circuit a wire joint rheostat closed plucky so these are the symbols the first one is for uh, wire joint second one we use the rheostat in both way like you draw one resistor and put an r mark on it that is also rheostat or you put it like this the other way that is also rheostat then for closed plucky you will have a dot inside for open you will not have that dot okay next question number 74 draw the ray diagram to show the formation of image by a concave mirror when the objects is placed at f on principal axis and write the nature and position of the image oh gosh i am really very happy these are the direct questions from our videos right from our optics video very nice so this is very simple thing actually for that mirror for a concave mirror when there is the object is placed at the focus what is going to happen the image will be formed at infinity because those rays know they will go parallelly and then it will be very highly enlarged because it will be very far okay so this was a question for three marks nice i must say you all are very lucky you have been very lucky this time uh, aspirants from gpstr who have really worked hard i think they will score uh, very nice marks this time very nice i'm very happy okay next question explain the phenomenon of dispersion of white light through the triangular glass prism with the help of diagram even this question is from our optics video okay here you can see that actually that time also had made an answer like this only something like this only i have drawn this uh, prism and then i have showed how the lights get separated anyway for three marks this question is asked the answer should be like this separation of white light into different components it is called dispersion of light when ray of light it enters a prism it will bend because of refraction of light there will be different colors in this uh, uh, spectrum whatever is found here it is called a spectrum they will have different colors and they will have different speeds therefore they will have different angles of deviation also okay with because of this the emergent light will appear as a band of seven colors which is known as spectrum those will be violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red we go ahead okay so next question draw a diagram showing conductivity of a salt solution label graphite rod and battery so this should be your answer 
you dry a beaker then you put some salt solution there then you have this graphite rod then you make a small circuit with the switch and the bulb okay so much is enough for three marks next question write the value of avogadro number calculate the molecular mass of hno3 oh great really very nice this is also from our chemistry class right this is a very easy question actually so this avogadro number it will be 6.0 to 20 10 raised to 23 then to find this molecular mass of HNO3, you should know the atomic mass of each element. It is given in the question here. Then you just find the molar mass of HNO3. It is very easy, right? 1 into 1 plus 1 into 14 plus 16 into 3 because there are 3 atoms of oxygen. This will be your 63U. Now next question. What are alloys? Write the constituents of brass and bronze. So alloys, they are the solid mixture of two or more metals. They are made by first melting the constituent metals and then mixing them thoroughly in fixed proportions. This was all about alloys. Now to write about the constituents of brass, it is made up of copper and zinc and bronze, it is made up of copper and tin. Okay. Next question. Write the molecular formula and functional groups of the following compounds. Ethanol, propanol, ethanoic acid. Here the functional group for propanol, it will be CHO. And the molecular uh, formula will be C2H5CHO. For ethanol, it is alcohol, right? So, functional group will be OH. And formula will be C2H5OH. For ethanoic acid, the functional group will be OOH. Okay, two times oxygen will be there. So, CH3COOH will be the molecular formula. Next question. What are plant hormones? Name plant hormones that promote cell division. Inhibit growth in plants. Great. This is awesome. We have done only one biology class and we have talked about both, right? It's very nice. So, plant hormones, they are signal molecules that occur in extremely low concentrations within the plants. They control all aspects of plant growth and development from stress tolerance to reproductive development. Promotion of cell division, it is regulated by cytokinins. Inhibition of growth is regulated by abscisic acid. Next question. Even this question we have talked about in our class, right? In our biology class. So, what is food chain and construct a food chain by using the organisms given snake, grasshopper, grass and frog? Food chain in an ecosystem is defined as the passage of food from one trophic level to the next higher trophic level. The transfer of food from one trophic level to the next level results in the passage of energy through these trophic levels. So, this is all about food chain. Now, if I make this uh, food chain with uh, grass, then grass is eaten by grasshopper, then grasshopper is eaten by frog, then snake eats frog and then eagle eats snake. This is your food chain. Okay. Next question. What is evolution? Mention any two evidences of evolution. No evolution. It is the biological change of a species over a span of time. The evidence for evolution are vestilogus organs and fossils. Okay. Vestilogus organs means those organs which were used by the ancestors of organisms. For example, in human beings, some organs like appendix are they are of no use, right? But we were used to use means our ancestors used to use once upon a time. Then the remains of remote past, they are known as fossils. These fossils of uh, archaeopteryx, they show that the reptiles and birds, they had a common ancestor. Now, those were our three mark questions. Now, let's discuss the four mark questions. First question is explain the refraction through a rectangular glass slab with the help of a diagram. Very nice. I am really very happy. It is like I am addressing my video before the exam while I am solving the question paper. This is a very nice feeling really. Okay. So the light ray bends towards the normal that is light ray. It gets refracted on entering the glass medium. The refracted ray will now travel through the glass slab and it will come out of the glass slab by refraction. It will come from the other boundary. Okay. Then since uh, this ray it will go from glass medium to air that is the rarer medium to denser medium again it will get refracted and it will bend away from the normal. The incident ray and the emergent ray they are parallel to each other. Here you can see that angle I is incidence ray, angle R is angle of refraction and angle E is the angle of emergence. Then angle of incidence and angle of emergence they both will be equal as emergent ray and incident ray they are parallel to each other. When a light ray is incident normally what will happen? At that interface, no, the two media, then there will be no bending. That light will pass through the medium only. And then it will go through the straight line. Okay, this was your four mark question. Very nice. So, you need to draw the diagram also. If you have drawn the diagram, then your four marks are pakka. I don't mean that you have to write only ex exactly these points. If you have written some three, four very important points from this, more than enough. So, your four marks are reserved there. 
ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ए बी एंड सी आर दी एलिमेंट्स हैविंग एटॉमिक नंबर्स 10 11 एंड 17 रेस्पेक्टिवली नेम द एलिमेंट दैट इज नोबल गैस मेटल नॉन मेटल एंड द एलिमेंट विद लार्जर एटॉमिक साइज सो दिस वाज आल्सो वेरी मच एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन राइट वी वर टॉकिंग इन द केमिस्ट्री क्लास इन वन ऑफ आवर केमिस्ट्री क्लास वी टोल्ड दैट वी नीड टू बी थरो विद द पीरियोडिक टेबल द बेसिक्स ऑफ द पीरियोडिक टेबल राइट सो दे हैव आस्क्ड फॉर फोर मार्क्स ओके सो द सिक्स नोबल गैसेस विल बी हीलियम नियॉन ऑर्गन क्रिप्टन जेनॉन एंड रेडॉन Their atomic numbers will be two, ten, eighteen, thirty-six, fifty-four, and eighty-six. So here, noble gas means atomic number will be ten. In this, ten will be your noble gas. So ten is here element A as per this question. So element A is noble gas. Next is elements having one, two, or three electrons in the last shell. They all act as metals. Now element with atomic number Z is equal to eleven here. Only that eleven will have one electron in the last shell. It must be sodium. The other two will not have, right? Therefore, this should be uh, what is the element here? Eleven. It is B. Okay, B should be metal. Next is C is a non-metal. Why? The atomic number seventeen because it can gain electrons easily. If it can gain electrons easily, means there will be no interaction. It will not behave as a metal. non metals they have large number of valence electrons and are already close to having complete octet of 8 electrons there are already 17 right the 17 is atomic number means it will be very close to complete this octet therefore it will be a non metal the element with larger atomic size obviously higher the atomic number heavier the element so which is the heavier element in 10 11 and 17 17 is the heavier element right that is element c it will be heavier okay next question draw a schematic sectional view of the human heart and label the following aorta and right ventricle so this is your human heart i don't know how you have drawn it is not possible to draw exactly the same way but using the fist we used to draw in our school days right that is the best way okay and if you have named only these two i have mentioned all the parts here so that it will be easy for future aspirants but uh, here you need to mention only two parts aorta and right ventricle if you have mentioned then your four marks are reserved here so these were your four mark questions As I told you in the strategy and time management video, I told that there will be no question from maths in four marks, right? So they have not asked as per our discussion. So okay, friends, this completes your GPSTR 2022 question paper from mathematics and science. I hope my video helps you. Please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And uh, also, please let me know in comment section how you feel about my classes. And also, if there is any scope of in improvement please let me know i would love to hear scope of improvement from you all because see these online classes are such that i cannot see you all it is not like offline class right so if i want to know your reaction only that comment section is the one way through which i can know your reaction whether you are liking my videos or not i am going very fast or i am going very slow or you want something else from me uh, the way do you want me to change the way i teach okay so please let me know all this in the comment section and uh, if you are watching this video first time for the first time please subscribe to my channel also if you are a hpstr uh, aspirant or if you are a tet aspirant then also please subscribe to my channel because i will uh, try to start the classes for hpstr now okay okay friends thank you bye